Somebody like to say something or talk or ask? Yeah, yeah. Manifestation, you said, was through Shakti. From Shakti comes manifestation. And the observer, who is the observer? Is it Shiva and Shakti which is the observer? Is it just... So I wanted to understand that. Well, the first premise you have to remember is that you are Shiva, but you have forgotten. <laughs> so, what level of vibration can I be at to remember even a bit of that? In how many minutes of the day? Right? I am Shiva, I am Shakti, I am Shiva Shakti. In my body, every cell is Shakti. Every cell is intelligent. There's a living goddess in every nadi, in every cell, in every quantum particle. Can I talk to any of them? Even one? Do I ever talk to any of them? <laughs> so the point is that observer means you are let, if you were to say what level of vibration begins observation, the throat. When you get to the Visuddha Chakra, your ego starts to dissolve, right? And then you are saying, well, which me is reacting? Which me is acting in the world? Which level am I coming from? Where am I vibrating from? What these words that are coming out of my mouth, who is saying them? And suddenly you learn to shut up and observe. This breath that's coming in, who is breathing? These eyes that are seeing, who is seeing? These words that I'm saying, vak, where is it coming from? Is it coming from the back of my throat? Is it coming from, they say that all the vowels are shaktis and all the consonants are shiva. So, am I aware of every consonant hitting every Shakti and completing with the Visarga? No. <laughs> so much to be aware of. So, this is where the observation begins, at that fifth chakra. But you were only talking about Shakti just now. So, and you are saying, I am Shiva and Shakti both. Mm -hmm. So, then why are we talking only about Shakti? Why not Shiva and Shakti? Because if, how can you dance with, talk to, intimately discuss things with, learn from consciousness, from the infinite consciousness of the universe? No person, no personality. How? It's like saying, Pray to Allah and all will be given. Pray to Jehovah, pray to whatever. Most people end up praying to a saint or to Jesus Christ or to Muhammad or to somebody in order to find a window to that consciousness, right? Shakti is the best window we've ever created on this earth. <laughs> For that kind of thing. I mean, all the practices, you know, the sacred feminine has been a part of us for thousands of years from the beginning. Just imagine, ancient people knew each rock, each river, each tree. They had names, they had energy, they talked to them. They learned medicine from them. They learned healing from them. They... You know, he said that they all, in some villages, people used to do amavasya at the same time, uh, menstrual period at the same time every day, a month. Ha! That means you're in rhythm of some kind, right? Now, that doesn't mean you're free will and creative and, and individual, because there probably was no allowance for an individual self. Today, we are individual selves, right? What about me? What will happen to me? How will I find union with God? How will I become like a Shakti? Me, 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 no? <laughs> so the whole idea is, at the fifth chakra, we stop being me. That's why Dattatreya controls the fifth chakra. Om Rheem Dham Dattatre Hare Krishna Unmata Nanda Daika Digambaram Bale Bala Pishacha Gyana Sagara Dham Rheem Om Just 
dissolve. Dram means dissolve, vaporize. Vaporize your ego, vaporize your identity with self, vaporize who you are, vaporize, just let it go. Uh, I mean, and don't you agree that before attending or searching the Shakti in the self, one has to leave the materialism and uh, egoism, and that is the basic thing, how to do that? So here's the beauty of Shakti, is that she love you even if you don't do any of that. <laughs> You can be a sinner or a saint and she'll still love you. Unconditionally. Bapri. That is some serious love. Look, it is your ego that's telling you I'm not pure. I'm not worthy. I'm not ready. I don't have any... I've been such a horrible, selfish person. How can I have awakening? It's your little puny Anu ego talking. What if I said, you're forgiven of everything right now, go be free. That's what the G Christian church does, no? Come confess, bas ho gaya. go. You're forgiven. Ten Hail Marys and off you go. Okay. But here we say no. Nothing is pure or impure. Nothing. Your mind will change when you understand that love. Does that make sense? When you understand that the mother loves you like that, your heart will start vibrating and you'll say, yeah, okay, I get it. <laughs> that means she love you even if you have a bad thought, even if you have a day you dropped, you know. People ask me, you know, do you meditate every morning? I don't know, depends on how, what mood I'm in, right? I don't get up and say, oh my God, I didn't meditate yesterday, so now my life is ruined, I'm a sinner. <laughs> Go easy on yourself. Awakening comes from the heart, not from the rituals and orders you follow. Yes, we all need habits, we need good practices, but don't beat yourself up if you can't keep it up, right? Don't try and become some sattvic pure person before you approach the goddess. Or God, or anybody. Why? She's going to love you anyway. He's going to love you anyway. Question is, uh, I, uh, two questions actually. The first one is, you say that a lot of our Ucharan was lost and went into Buddhism and then came back to us, uh, as in we've rediscovered it. No, I didn't say lost. The Tantra. I would never do say lost. When we rediscover it, what, in your opinion, has changed over time? It, that's well, first, first of all, you know, I mean, the very fact that we can talk about this right now, or you can read the Tibetan Book of the Dead, or you can go down to South India and visit Devi Puram, or you can discover, you know, Chit Akasha by going to a temple in South India and understand what it means in mystery terms and not just in ritual, right? is already working, right? And people like me, people like Guruji, Amritananda, Rama are making it accessible, right? You know, I don't talk, I, I mean, I can teach Vedanta, I can teach other things, but I don't want to. I want to empower people to free themselves. You know, liberation doesn't have to come at the price of, of giving up the world. Liberation should be, what, what they say, 100% mystical, 100% material. <laughs> In fact, when you start meditating and you get to these higher states of consciousness and vibration, you actually do better in the world. Does that make sense? You're healthier, you're clearer, you have less inhibitions and blocks, you're less angry, you're kind of live and let live, you know. Yeah, there's a time to be Durga and there's a time to be Kali and there's a time to be loving mother. You can be all those Shaktis in one, right? I can teach you 108 Shaktis we can dance with, right? They're all in you. They're just a different petal you can touch here and say, oh, okay. <laughs> so, the key is that 
the whole purpose of tantra is to die in this life at a higher level of vibration and more free of your karma does that make sense yeah that means if i can burn all my bad karma in my manipura and liberate myself and become light as a feather so i have less anxiety less negative thoughts less everything then when death comes i'm not scared because i've tasted consciousness at so many subtle levels that i think yeah i'll give you an example do a little experiment we do in tantra which is that just pinch your hand go on, pinch it really hard pinch it hard <laughs> Now you you felt the pain, right? Did you feel it? Felt the pain? Eh? It went first. It hurt here. Then it travelled up your head. Then it kind of went to your brain and said, "Ow! What are you doing?" Right? <laughs> like some some voice in there said, "What are you doing?" Right? You idiot! You listen to that man. <laughs> Somebody saying that right now. If I say stab your hand, you you some mind would go, "Whoa, whoa, easy guy." You know. Okay, let's take it another way now. I want you to do the same pinch, right? Same place, but look at it as if you're going into that point and dissolve into that point and stick your mind at that point only. Pinch it. And just keep it there and let go. How long did it last? Much longer. Huh? Much longer. And less painful. Hmm. Was it less painful? Yes. So the pain became local. There was no movement from here through the nervous system to my head, right? So that means when I'm angry, some part of my stomach has gone haywire, right? That's transmitting a message to my brain saying I'm angry, I'm releasing endorphins, I'm going to get mad, I'm going to start fuming, my heart rate's going to go up, my blood pressure's going to go up, I'm going to get really pissed off right now. You have about a microsecond when that happens, correct? Correct. So can I can I get in there and just stop it? You could. So what tantra says is that okay, how about we use a mantra to stop it? Hum, sa, bas, chala gaya. Shri, chala gaya. You have a chance. Every breath, in breath, is a new reality. Every out breath is a dissolving back to source. In. <laughs> So when I'm about to get angry, if I take a deep breath, ah. <laughs> my my second part of the same question was how important is the physical creation of a space in order for you to be able to chant or to practice what you're talking about? The the the, the, the actual the, 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 I can't quote it exactly, but I'll paraphrase the quote from yep. a great tantric teacher. He says that my body is the most remarkable nation I've ever been to. There are rivers and streams and lakes in there, and tirthas and temples and goddesses and yoginis and all inside me. What what need do I have to go to a pilgrimage when all I have to do is climb up my spine? What need do I have to go to a mountain Himalayan cave when I have a cave inside my own head? What need do I have to do anything when I'm sitting here, wherever I am, in the most beautiful temple I can imagine? Right? Wherever you are is your mandala. You want to make it holy? Good. Use any technique you like to make it holy. When you are the mandala, you. Your spinal cord. That's it. <laughs> nice, no? Temples, rituals are anavopaya. They're crutches. We want to be crutch-free. I what? my question is that on one hand you're saying that there is nothing right and nothing wrong. Everything just is, right? The Divine Mother loves you regardless of everything. On the other hand, you're talking about getting rid of bad karma. Mm -hmm. so isn't that contradictory? No, because if I have a, a, a friend that's negative or a relative that's negative, 
I can't get rid of them. They kind of stuck with them, right? We stuck with them. But if I give them love and I dampen their effect on me, yeah? Getting rid of bad karma doesn't mean some kind of detoxification and cleansing. No. It means looking at your reaction to it as a meditation, as an observation, right? That means that person did no harm to you. The harm was done by you in your reaction, in your vibration, in the way you listen to that person. There's, everybody here has one family member whose voice will make you go <laughs> I, I don't want to be corny, but learning to love yourself is a corny expression. But it means that when I meditate internally, when I lighten my load, when I open my heart, when I see visions, when I allow light to come in, grace to come in, what effect can that person have on me? I have seen divine bliss and felt it. And you want to talk about how I never take you anywhere. <laughs> yeah. But then that part of you comes and does better at being in that relationship. So you actually do end up taking them somewhere without judging too much and doing less and less, you know. The secret is to be extremely selfish in your self-realization. So uh, the rituals uh, of Tantra and uh, yogic practices, I mean, you know, they're well proven to bring benefit to the mind and body and the soul. Um, my question is that uh, the, yeah. so the source behind them, the mythologies and all these um, characters of mythologies, how do we pass it on to our children? Do we tell them as truth or do we tell them fictional tales of wisdom? You know, it's weird because I didn't grow up in India. And I learned about Indian mythologies from Amachitra Katha. Right? Me too. Yeah. And I forgot everything completely through my college years and, you know, and then when I was 33, I started reading again and I was reading Kundalini and Kriyas and all these things and suddenly I just knew this stuff. It was weird, right? Prahlad and this and that and I knew all this stuff, right? So yeah, grudgingly I took the vocabulary, but it paid off later in interest for me, right? So it depends on how you do the storytelling, right? Like even me, I'm storytelling with you right now. Because nobody may have explained Rakta Ji Bija or Chanda Munda like that to you before. Or if you may have heard one or thing, right? I didn't go into the story of Rakta Vija and what happened and how Kali came out of Devi's breasts and I didn't do all that stuff, you know. But I told you a metaphor, you know. So metaphors are a very good way of telling stories to kids also. Like doing this is like this, this is what happens, you know, sometimes when you do that. You're kind of lighting a fire in your stomach. If you've got problems, throw it into that fire. Right? It becomes a kind of tool. Right? Now, you, now you can say, okay, you know, when you're doing that, you can say, I'm hrim klim chamunaya vichay. Hmm? And so they try it and it's fun. And they don't know why they're getting less stressed. They don't know why they're feeling more power. Right? But they feel it. My daughter does I'm Reem Klim Jamunda Vijay three times and she's like vertical again. You know. So it's how you you have to enjoy the you're still the observer, remember? So you're gonna observe them too in the same way that you're observing yourself. We live in neuroscientific modern times, and yet our teachers use metaphors that are arcane, right? 
That's why I started with all the discomfort we feel today. Think about it. In Buddha's time, in the Shramana time, people were preoccupied with death because people were dying like flies in the cities, right? You could walk around any city in India, Magadh, Kashi, and there would be dead bodies lying there, right? That's what Buddha saw. Dead body, old age, no medicine, no penicillin, no nothing. Today, we don't even think about death. Death is something done in an electric oven, and then we go and have a chai and some kitten or whatever, and then we go, right? Who thinks about death? You don't see death. You don't know what death is. So why are we basing our lives on a religious idea around death and the afterlife when we don't give a toss about the afterlife? Do you care about the afterlife? How many times do you think about the afterlife in a day? Samsara. Never. Never. So why do we kid ourselves that that is the religion for me? But the teachings of the practices are to do with your biology, your neurology, your, your being. They, it's psychology, right? Now, I can find metaphors in old stories to give you, that help you, but that's just, you know, me talking to you, Anabapaya, like a child, right? I don't want to treat you like a child. I want to treat you like a seeker. So we are not religious people. We are mystical people. We want to look at the universe in awe. We want to see our bodies in awe. And then we see it in every religion, the beauty of that. No? So what I'm going to teach you, you don't need no God, you don't need no religion, but you will experience Shakti. That means that Shakti is a universal feeling rather than a Hindu thing. Does that make sense? You're going to feel an energy. Now, however it comes to you, let it come. Open your mind. You know, I'm not going to hypnotize you. I'm not going to do anything like that. But I will do four things. I'm going to give you an upbeat energy boost right now. Right? First is energization. So that you suddenly feel like that. Right? And I'm going to teach you how to do that in one minute flat. Second, you're going to learn deep relaxation. Right? Relaxing all our body. Third is we're going to visualize these shaktis, this energy in us. And fourth, we're going to surrender at the heart. Okay. So I've given you the... Uh, in, in, in hypnotic parlance, I've laid out the road map for you. So now you're mine. <laughs> You'll be in trans state now because I've induced it. Right? But the fact is that we're going to induce it ourselves. And this is the beauty of this technique, right? So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to clench our bottom and pull it up like this. <laughs> clench your bottom and pull it up. Like, so this is called the Ashwini Mudra. You're going to <laughs> pull it up. And then I want you to tighten your neck at the same time. Put it back a bit. And put the tongue to the roof of your mouth and clench your hands at the same time. So ready? We're going to breathe in now. Ready? <laughs> And hold it up, touch the tongue to the roof of your mouth, and hold it for 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And double out. Ha! Ha! Again. <laughs> Clench your hands tight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Drop it. Ha! Ha! Again. <laughs> Come on. Pump it up so you feel. Energy traveling up your spine, over your head, and filling you up. And drop it. Ha. Ha, ha. Again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Drop it. Ha. Ha. Again. Ha. Do one more for good luck. Come on, tighten. Neck back, tongue to the roof of your mouth, and let go. Ha. Ha. Now rub your hands. Hard, hard, hard. Rub your hands hard. And put left hand under your bottom and right hand on your neck. And imagine a circuit being created. And relax. How's your energy? 
Did it go up? You feeling more energy? Huh? You could take another two hours of talk, can't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> When, you know, I love it when people say to me, oh, I can meditate for two hours. What does that mean? What are you doing in there for two hours? <laughs> I am sitting by a tranquil lake. What stupid meditation. Yeah? Dissolve. <laughs> Go back into the other side. If you can't get there in one minute, it's not worth it. <laughs> All right. Ready? So, we're going to relax our bodies. Right? Tighten your face, scrunch it, and breathe out like a sigh. <sighs> Shunch your shoulders and your arms. <sighs> your forehead. <sighs> your, your jaw. <sighs> your chest. <sighs> your heart center. Side out, ah, the back of your shoulders, ah, your two arms, and let go, ah, your lower back. Now tighten your bottom again. Swing your tailbone forward to touch the yoni or linga and release it. Ah, again, swing it forward and release it. Ah. Again, and swing it forward and release. Ah, okay, good. See, you you tighten your bum, and you swing the tail forward like a tailbone, like a tail, and you imagine it's touching your yoni or your linga, just touching it, and you let go. This creates a connection for muladhara to take your sexual energy and turn it up your spine. Okay, see, instant, right? Now. Tighten your thighs and let go. Tighten your calves. Scrunch your toes and let go. Now come up and take a deep breath. And imagine the Dvada Shanta I told you about just 12, like just above your head, just here. And feel an energy, like a ball of energy coming down. Hum to your heart center and then turn it around and say sa in your mind sa and let it go out hum close your eyes and do it if you like you'll feel the energy coming in and sa hum sa hum sa now do it quietly without any hamsa. Come, watch it coming in from above. The jiva is coming in. Coming down to your heart center, your ridhaya. Turn it around and let it go out again. On the out breath. Again. Turn it around. Now we're going to do the aham breath, which is a very good trika breath, which is we're going to take the energy down, tighten our anus, muladhara, and we're going to go ah and hum with it, okay? So you go aham. Releasing as you go. And tighten your bum again, breathe again. Aham. Bring the ball of energy down to your muladhara. Tighten it. Aham. Feeling good? Now bring it down again. Mm -hmm. And this time I want you to imagine that you're shooting a bolt of lightning up your spine like a vajra, like a boom! Ha! Ah, shoot it up out the top of your head. 
Okay? Bring the ball of energy down. Mm. Tighten your bum and now shoot it up the spine cord. <laughs> Again. And shoot it up. <laughs> Bring it back down. And this time I want you to imagine that as you're releasing the breath, you're lighting a candle at every chakra. Just go up your spine, seven candles you're going to light to the Dvada Shanta. Ready? And light the candle as you breathe out. Feel light coming in your spinal cord, gently filling you with light. Beautiful light, beautiful. In front of your eyes you can feel the jyoti, above your head you can feel the jyoti. Breathe in again, gently, lovingly, and light it again. And feel the spinal cord lighting up as if beams of light are coming out from it, like little rays are coming out in every direction. And you're going up your spine and letting go. Again. And this time feel it like a tickling is going up your spine, like an ant crawling. Gently going up the middle of your spinal cord. And then down, breathe in. And let it tickle, 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 like an ant crawling up your spine. And bring it back. And you feel this tingling feeling in the back of your spine around your heart center. And let the tickling go up. And bring your mind to the light above you and look upwards into it and imagine the beam of light coming down into you, filling your spinal cord with light and then tickling going up, cool breeze climbing up your spinal cord, beautiful, bring it back down. And now I want you to put your mind down on your heart center and relax there and feeling that tingling going up and down. Focus your mind on your heart. You can look slightly in front of you or just close your eyes and imagine your heart center like a white lotus with a beautiful white pearl sitting there. Imagine that heart center so full of love and so full of bliss. Light coming in from above, tingling from below. And it's feeling wonderful in your heart center right now. You're feeling such happiness. And I want you to just relax there. And close your eyes. And imagine that there's nothing in front of you. All gone. I'm gone. The room's gone. Nothing here. Nothing behind you. You're just floating. Nothing to the right of you, nothing to the left of you, nothing above you in that cavity coming in, nothing below you in the cavity there, only happening in your heart cavity, this blissful feeling in your heart filling you, try it, relax, and feel a tingling in your heart and feel the tingling going up your spine and even the upper cavity and lower cavity are now gone and all that remains is a beautiful heart cavity and you can feel the tingling going up your spine Shri Feel peace in your heart, a kind of blissful feeling in your heart. You can put your, cross your hands over your heart if you want to feel the pulse. You can cross your hand over your heart and shriek. Shriek. 
then you have no body, there's no skin, no bones, you're as light as a feather and you're only feeling that bliss in your heart. Feel the beautiful blissful feeling as if somebody's loving you and holding you. And you feel so loved, so much joy. Feel that love. That's the Shakti Shanta, Kamla, Mahalakshmi, whatever name you want to give that Shakti. It's in your heart. Feel her bliss. Om Shreem Hreem Shreem Kamale Kamlane Prasida Prasida Shreem Hreem Shreem Om Mahalakshmi Namaha Om Shreem Hreem Shreem Kamale Kamlale Prasida Prasida Shreem Hreem Shreem Om Mahalakshmi Namaha Fill your heart with bliss. Relax. You can open your eyes and look at me. And just imagine there's golden energy all around us, everywhere. And just feel the energy coming into you. Just feel it. Send it out to everybody else also. Share it with love. Give away your energy. Accept their energy. Take it. Just enjoy the feeling in your heart. You can close your eyes and feel that blissful feeling in your heart. All that stuff you've been carrying, you're letting it go and just let go. And now it's coming down into you and you're going to chant the sound. I'm, say I'm, I'm, clean, clean, so. So clean, I. So as you go down, I am is the tongue, clean is the heart cavity, so is your yoni linga, and then back up again. And feel the movement of Chit Kundalini going up and down, okay? Close your eyes and experience it. I am clean, so. So clean, I, I'm clean, so, so clean, I, and just sit back and relax and enjoy the feeling in your heart, savor it, enjoy it. Forget everything. Just release yourself to that heart feeling. This Shakti is called Shanta. It brings peace. So easy to bring peace into yourself. If you did it by yourself, it would take you five minutes. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. I am clean, so, so clean. I am. I'm clean, so, so clean. I'm Bhur Bhuva Swaha Om. Digbat. All good? See the promise of Kundalini awakening as Prana Kundalini is easy. To open the heart chakra through Chit Kundalini needs the sharing and transmission feeling, you know. It's a very lovely feeling. Because if I'm vibrating at that, then you start resonating at my vibration and we all start dancing together, you know. You can actually heal somebody with this energy, you know, because you're sending it from the heart directly. You can actually bring peace to another person just by vibrating like that. So this Ridhaya meditation is critical to bringing peace to others and yourself. So if you start vibrating at this level, others around you cannot stay agitated. Or if they do, they'll have to go away because they won't know how to deal with it. You know, they want to taste it a little bit. They want to be with it. They want to feel it, right? No matter how cynical or doubtful they are, they are there's a kind of vibration starts, you know, and there's no magic here. 
I've just been doing it a lot longer than all of you, so I vibrate a little higher. But we're vibrating, right? Yes? Namaha.